Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. Israeli security forces arrested seven Palestinians in the West Bank overnight Tuesday in continued searches for the Balkan Industrial Zone terrorist. This is now the third day of the manhunt for Ashraf Na'alawa, who is suspected of killing two of his co-workers and injuring a third. Roughly 20 others, including Na'alawa's siblings and parents, were also temporarily detained or arrested as part of the investigations. Speaking Monday night, Prime Minister Netanyahu vowed that we would catch Na'alawa, the quote, abhorrent murderer, and we will settle accounts with him. The blood of Israeli citizens will not be spilled in vain, end quote. But catching him alone isn't enough for the parents of Kimi Cheskel and Ziv Hagbi, who were murdered Sunday morning by Na'alawa's gunfire. Kim is survived by her one-year-old son and husband, while Ziv is survived by his wife and three children. Sarah Vettori, who was the third victim and was moderately wounded in the attack, was released from Bailenson Hospital yesterday. But Kim's father, Rafael, specifically called for the death penalty for his daughter's murderer, saying, quote, every terrorist should know he would be executed and that his family will suffer for his crimes, end quote. This also comes after new reports show that Na'alawa made a cleaning worker zip tie Kim's hands before sparing the cleaner and shooting Kim dead. Education Minister and Security Cabinet member Naftali Bennett also called for more stringent security in the industrial zones, saying Israel needs to make a, quote, very significant and quick change to Israel's security policy and restore the deterrence, end quote. Namely, he said that daily, dozens of terrorists come out, plant explosives or commit attacks, and then return home safely. Quote, I'd give the order to kill them. We need to kill terrorists who infiltrate Israel, end quote. But security guards at the Balkan Industrial Zone complained that many security threats are impossible to catch as there are just so many people coming through in such a short time. A senior West Bank settlement official speaking to Ynet similarly said, quote, It doesn't make sense for 3,000 Palestinians to go through metal detectors within an hour. It's impossible to inspect all of them, end quote. The official continued to point out that their security systems are outdated or just missing, and that it's no secret that there is a security gap in the industrial areas. Hopefully, as tragic as it is, this attack will at least galvanize some necessary changes towards safety for all of those in the West Bank. After nearly half a year of terror in the South, the World Jewish Congress has submitted a petition with the United Nations signed by 22,000 people calling on the world body to condemn Hamas for its environmental crimes. Crimes specifically including the fires caused by incendiary kites and balloons flown from Gaza into Israel. Hamas's incendiary kite and balloon terrorism has caused the deaths of hundreds of animals and the destruction of over 8,000 acres of farmland and thousands more acres of forest and wilderness in the south. The petition was submitted by the CEO and executive vice president of the WJC, Robert Singer, to Jamil Ahmad, who is the deputy director of the UN Environmental Program. In the letter, Singer wrote that, quote, Hamas is committing consistent environmental crimes, burning thousands of tires and launching thousands of incendiary devices into Israeli territory in a deliberate and inexcusable act of environmental warfare, end quote, continuing that these are attacks against innocent beings and that it's unacceptable to see both animals and nature being targeted as victims of war. The letter explained that the terror organization is destroying the beauty and natural resources of southern Israel and stressed that, according to the international humanitarian law, which is protected by the UN, causing environmental destruction is prohibited and the international community must end its silence on the matter. Sonia Gomez de Mesquita, vice president of the World Jewish Congress, presented the petition to the chairman of the Knesset's Internal Affairs and Environmental Committee on Monday, and the WJC also plans to pass the petition to all southern regional councils harmed by the kite and balloon terrorism for signature. In other news, Israeli police have arrested a criminal gang that's been defrauding government authorities in both Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza as part of a massive credit card scam. Four suspects have been arrested and six more have been detained as part of the investigation for allegedly participating in the fraud scheme that funneled tens of millions of shekels out of customers' monthly bills and into their own accounts. The suspects advertised their services on social media, promising to pay electricity, taxes, and ongoing bills at a discounted rate to customers. But by using a software used internationally for payments using stolen credit cards, they then collected half of every payment made. Police have called out to the public to inform them of the danger of online predators, warning to avoid paying for services that promise discounted rates to pay their bills, as customers will end up having to pay the full rate again when authorities discover the fraud. They also warned that the money could end up in the bank accounts of terrorists and not just simple criminals. The investigation, made by the Lahav 433 Anti-Corruption Police Unit, was made public after the arrests were made, and the suspects appeared yesterday at the Rishon LeZion Magistrates Court. The group includes members who live in Israel and the Palestinian Authority, and they stand accused of fraud, money laundering, and tax offenses. 
According to a somewhat surprising report, Muslim countries are apparently reaching out to Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev, asking him how he manages to both foster positive ties with Israel and retain a Muslim identity. The report comes from American Rabbi Mark Schneier, who met with Aliyev in Baku and says that Aliyev told him of officials from Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and more, who are all asking the same question. And Schneier says that Aliyev allegedly responded, do both, you're not going to get punished, and you can find the right balance. Now why Azerbaijan? Well, aside from publicly having very close ties with Israel, Azerbaijan also still enjoys the reputation of being both a Muslim country and a Western nation something other Arab countries reportedly envy. Meanwhile, Palestinian Authority President Abbas is also now looking for a new policy with respect to relations with Israel, the US, and Gaza, but in the other direction. PA officials reported that Abbas called representatives of the PLO and Fatah to Ramallah to discuss these new policies, as Abbas has determined that the United States and Israel are, quote, intent on destroying the two-state solution in order to pave the way for implementing Trump's deal of the century. Now, it's unclear what the new policies will look like, but it's also not new that Abbas feels this way. He first made his feelings public following the United States' decision last year to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Further, just last week, the Palestinian president vowed to end payments to Gaza as long as Hamas refuses to cede control. But Abbas is seemingly facing opposition on all sides here, too, as Egyptian President Sisi, whose government has been brokering unification talks between Fatah and Hamas, is also now pressuring Abbas to negotiate or else. Sisi says Egypt will back out of mediation altogether if Abbas doesn't come back to the table. Time will tell how this develops. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.